This video is an introduction to the FEA engineering component in Vertex BD. It will focus on a wall panel which has previously been created. Please note that the FEA tools are designed for use by professionally qualified engineers. As such, this video is only intended to show the features available. All kilonewton values have been worked out previously. First switch into the 3D framing view, if not already, and ensure that you have no active commands. Now right click to bring up the contextual menu. In here choose the FEA for beams and frames option. The beam FEA contextual tab will automatically open. We then need to create a new study by reopening the contextual menu, right click and choose new study. Now select all of the wall profiles that you want to use and confirm. The study information box will appear. Give the study a name and description. You can also alter the direction of gravity and the gravitational acceleration. For this example, I will leave everything as is and click OK. Next, we need to link the members using nodes. First, I select all the members, then hit the link command from the beam tab in the ribbon. In the link nodes window, I will keep tolerance as automatic. This is the tolerance for linking nodes, so any value over this won't be linked. For the connection type, I will hinge about the Y axis, as this is the axis the joint will rotate in the real panel. Link type will be set to master slave link, as we don't need the additional bending moment that the rigid link would generate. We may then need to do some manual editing to the nodes to get them correct, paying particular attention to the openings. If a link is wrong, I can click on the master link and click unlink from the ribbon. For this example, I can then add additional nodes by selecting the member, then clicking the insert node command from the ribbon. Then to connect these all together, I can first click the member and then the node one by one. So for this example, I would like the header first, and then its node. Then select the other members one by one, and their respective nodes. Please note that the first selected node will always be the master node. Typically these master nodes should be in the passing member or support nodes, as the slave node cannot act as a support node. With all the nodes selected, I can then click the link command from the ribbon. Again, choosing hinged about the Y axis and the master slave link. I can then repeat to add a master slave link for the truss diagonals using the same method. I can then continue to add at other points using the same method. Best to add all of your nodes first, as after loads and buckling lengths are defined, the model could get pretty crowded. Now we can define the support for the model. In this case, it will be on a slab, so we first select the bottom plate, then right click and select nodes. This will select all the nodes on the bottom plate. I can then fix them by turning off the X, Y and Z direction. This sets the bottom plate as fixed and bearing, and keeps all of the nodes selected. However, to ensure the flange of the bottom plate won't buckle, I would then right click and choose bearing lengths and set this to minus one, meaning that there is no bearing results during the capacity check. Next, we define the lateral support for the top plate. For example, if I had trusses sat onto the top plate, I could add nodes for these at their respective locations. For simplicity, I will just select the same nodes where the studs are as these will support the trusses including the ends of the plate, then to add the support laterally for the Y direction I turn this on here. Once our nodes and supports are correctly defined, we can now add various loads. We will start with adding in a linear load to simulate a floor. First select the linear command from the load section of the beam FEA tab. Now select the start and end nodes of the top plate. The load hours will appear all along the top plate and the load properties window will open. We can then give the load a name, in this example floor dead, and define the load as 2.4 kilonewtons per meter. The kilonewtons will depend on the span and material used. We then change load type to dead load and set direction as gravity. At this point, it is worth checking that the model is working okay. By clicking the solve command in the beam FEA tab, you can then use the displacement slider to check the model is behaving as expected. The FEA results menu allows for the changing of stress plot and load patterns, as well as altering the displacement with results shown in real time within the model. Alternatively, a diagram can be shown. If it's not working as expected, you may need to adjust the nodes, etc. It is important, for instance, that groups of studs are acting as one and not crossing each other. If it is working as expected, then we can add a new point load choosing the relevant command in the ribbon. We can then add this to the end of the top plate. In load properties this time, we can give this name, for example, of earthquake and a kilonewton value of 4, but obviously this could be more. Load type can stay as dead load. For direction, click Select Plane, 
and click one of the instead so that it follows the direction of the panel. Click OK and then resolve to check behavior, particularly in regard to the bracing. Basically, the model should deflect in the plane of the panel. You could also add a concentrated wind load that is parallel to the horizontal earthquake load to check the bracing for any wind load that is parallel to the panel. For example, if the panel is part of a shear wall. Next, we can add area loads, for example, wind loads, by clicking the area load command from the Beam FEA tab. Now select the top and bottom plate, which will define the area. We can then rename the load to wind in the load area properties window, as well as change the load type to a wind load type and define the value to 0.6. Direction this time will be perpendicular to panel. The system marks the parts that take the load, but by design does not include the bracing nor the blocking, as these will not be taking the wind loads, only the studs and track will. Headers, on the other hand, are designed to take the vertical load, so are also excluded. The wind loads will be added, but will be initially hidden. You can restore them from the studies tree by going into loads, clicking wind, and right clicking and restore. You'll then see them all as magenta arrows. Loads will differ from the 0.6 defined as loads are spread across all selected members. Where we have openings are of particular importance as the load from the area load on the opening will be shared across the lintel and the header if the opening's width is greater than the height. If it is the opposite, the jam studs will take the majority of the loads. However, depending on how windows are fixed, you may want to add additional load to the non-affected profiles. Again, we can solve the model and check it's behaving as expected, and the wind load is affecting it by deflecting the panel plane. We can then add an additional dead load to the panel, again choose an area, and giving it the name Panel Dead. Load type can be dead load, and a value of 0.3. Direction this time is gravity. We can then restore that load. Currently the dead load is applied to the lintel and sill of the opening, which is incorrect as they are fixing into the side studs. To rectify, we can select the members, starting first with the header track, hold control and select the load labels one by one. Note you have to select the load label, not the arrows. Once selected, press the delete key on your keyboard. Then doing the same for the sill member. We can then add a new line load to the sill and header to divide the loads properly, choosing linear load from the ribbon. Then select the profile and finally the start and end nodes. The load can then be renamed to panel dead and the value this time as 0.1. As is worked out using the height of the header. Again, the direction is gravity. The sill member can then be selected, choosing the first and last node. The value this time will be 0.42 as it takes the weight of the window. Once done, our loading model should be more realistic. However, we still need to add a floor live load. This can be done using the linear load type, again selecting the top plate and the start and end nodes, renaming as floor live and giving a value of 6. Load type will be live and direction should be gravity. Now that all our loads are defined, we can add the load pans for them. First, we'll do the total load check by selecting all of the relevant loads, in this case the dead loads, then unselecting the earthquake load, and finally selecting the wind loads. These must be done in the order they are displayed in the study tree. We can then OK these and give this a name of total loads pattern, clicking OK after. The load combination window will appear. For the total loads, we need to select all of the ULS or ultimate limit state load combinations. Note there are two main types for the Euro codes, STRGO, which is for the structural checks, and EQU, which is for stability. In this case, we are checking the structural combinations. However, typically they will use bigger factors than the stability, so we can use Select All and click OK. We can then do something similar for the earthquake load, selecting it with the load pattern still selected. Now right click, OK, and give the load pattern a name. We will call this earthquake. The load combinations this time will just be a stability check. So we just select the EQU load combinations. Clicking OK after. The load patterns are now defined. The last step before the capacity check is to choose the buckling lengths. Different profiles will have different behaviours. For this reason we will look at them separately. 
first we select all of the profiles. We'll then unselect the top and bottom track. We can switch back to the Beam FEA tab and click the Buckling Lens option from the ribbon Choosing by Member. The Buckling and Lateral Buckling menu will open. Here you can set different rules for the buckling. For the Y axis, we can check Apply Between Link Nodes and keep Effective Length as 1.0, which will use the blocking nodes. Effective length could be set to 600 if the sheathing is to be factored in, but this will depend on the sheathing material. For the Z direction, which will be the studs, this does not need to be applied between link nodes and effective length factor is set to 1. This is so the whole length of the stud is used. Torsional buckling should follow the Y axis. For this example, the lateral buckling can be ignored, so all options unchecked. Now click OK. The buckling length diagram will be added. We can then do the same for the bottom track. This time for the Y, we can uncheck Apply Between Link Nodes and use Effective Length as 600. Using the same parameters for the Z and Torsional Buckling, then clicking OK. We can finally do the top track, selecting it, then choosing Buckling Lengths by Members. Y Direction will follow Link Nodes, Z Direction will follow Truss Spacing, for example an Effective Length of 600, Torsional Effective Length will be the same, set at 600. The final step is to run the capacity check by choosing it from the ribbon. Here you can set the design criteria as well as the deflection limits. Once OK is clicked, the engineering is run. Any areas are displayed in the calculation messages window that pops up on the left side of the screen. Clicking each of these will show where the error is. We can then click OK and use the Mark Parts option from the toolbar to see these in the model. Checking on Mark Parts Stress Index over 1, which shows the members that aren't strong enough in red. In this example, the issue is the large load and a downwind load onto the panel, which has a wide opening, and this impacts onto the truss diagonals. To fix, an inverse truss should have been used. To view a more detailed breakdown of the capacity check, make sure nothing is selected in the study, then right click and choose Capacity Summary Results FEA. This will open up the report in Excel with additional information. These results could be used to select the proper amount of screws each connection. Noting that the capacity check does not check the connections of the panel, please use the usual methods in BD to check these. This concludes the video on FEA engineering. For more extensive information, please see the online Vertex documentation. Thank you for watching.